Thank you. Uh, I must say today I'm very happy for several reasons. The first one is that I'm back in India, uh, a country that I learned to, to love. Uh, I spent uh, some uh, uh, time during this summer with my family here, and I must say I remember the time in India like the best uh, vacation we had with my, my wife and my son. The second reason is that um, I am appreciating a lot this, uh, this award, and uh, I am understanding that uh, the name of Natarajan in India, but I must say all over the world, is uh, one of the most important names for eye doctors. So to be awarded by uh, Natarajan means uh, something special uh, for me. Thank you. Uh, you had already some information about the grandfather, the father of uh, Rati, so um, I do not need to add more, but uh, please believe me, I am very happy because this is an important recognition for what I did, and uh, given by uh, a Natarajan institution means something more than in any other place. So if I understood well, this is... Uh, uh, this is not a night doctor's uh, attendance, so I'll try to tell you something about the problem of diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy is uh, the most important complication that diabetes mellitus can produce in the eyes. Diabetes mellitus is a disease characterized by an increase of glycemia in the blood, and this chronic increase of glycemia, uh, which means sugar, uh, produces damages wherever in the body. And uh, one of the most important districts where these damages are produced are inside the eye, retina. And that's the reason why we as eye doctors are so interested to speak about diabetic retinopathy. So in this presentation, uh, we will say something about the epidemiology of diabetes and the epidemiology of diabetic retinopathy which means the number of patients with these kind of problems. We will say something about screening of eye complications of diabetes. We will say something about the new diagnostic devices that we have today and the new therapeutic options. If you have anything to say, please stop me. I will be happy to interact with you and to make this something which is useful for everybody instead of uh, speaking, speaking, and speaking for uh, nobody listening. So this is the, the, the most important slide, I think, that in the field of uh, uh, diabetic retinopathy we have during uh, uh, last years. I mean, uh, okay. Um, this is a paper which was published in uh, Lancet uh, last year. I think this is the most important paper that we had in medi medical literature. Uh, all the most important experts in epidemiology, so the people, experts for speaking about the number of patients affected by some disease, uh, put it together, information coming from a lot of studies, uh, 751 population, which is a number, in crazy number of studies of trials that were put it together by all these experts and they considered uh, a period which was from 80 to, so 34 years, from 80 to 2014. And uh, the number of people considered was 4.4 million, which is an incredible number for a medical study. And uh, these numbers were coming from 146 uh, countries. So, I, I cannot present you all the data of this study, but I'd like to present you something. And the most important information is, is that the number of diabetic patients during these 34 years uh, increased from 108 million to 422 million, which is more than three times the number that we had before in 34 years. The diabetic males came from uh, 4.3 to 9%, females from 5 to 7.9 percent. But maybe the most important thing is this statement, which was 
not mine. This is a statement made by the authors of the manuscript. They say, uh, following this trend, I mean this kind of increase, diabetic patients will be 700 millions in 2015, tw 2025, and health system will collapse all over. This is a crazy information. Nobody is speaking about that, but this is something to be really considered by everybody. If we will not make a real change, we will be destroyed by diabetes because the number of patients will be so high that we will have no money to manage complications from diabetes. So the first point is that we need to talk to administrators, we need to talk to politicians, we need to say, please help us to stop epidemic of diabetes mellitus, otherwise, you politicians, you administrators, and, uh, and we as doctors, and for sure, more important, patients, will be unable to solve the problem. Is this clear? This is really a problem. And India is one of the countries where you had an increase, a more important increase in the number of patients. Uh, the causes for this, the reasons for this problem are uh, summarized here. Uh, higher urbanization, the people is, are older, whatever, uh, the sedentary lifestyle, uh, problems with diets and so on. These are all things well known by, by everybody. Uh, but nothing is done for moving the system in a different direction. What about the geography of diabetes mellitus? The highest frequency is in medium and low income countries. So Pacific Islands, Middle East countries, North Africa, Polynesia, Micronesia. Uh, there, there are countries where you have 20% of the entire population affected by diabetes mellitus, which is something crazy. Nobody can uh, face this problem uh, if we do not change the attitude. We can control diabetes. We, we, we need to prevent diabetes mellitus and complications of diabetes mellitus. Okay, this is diabetes, but what about diabetic retinopathy, which is, as I told you, the most important complication of the disease. So uh, there was a study which is similar to what I presented right now. The one I presented was for diabetes mellitus, and this is a study which was done for diabetic retinopathy. The system is similar. So uh, there, there were a, a combination of information coming from different uh, several uh, trials uh, in 14 countries from Australasia, uh, Central Western Europe, North America, Caribbean, uh, Latin America, so different parts of the world. And all the information coming from these uh, studies were considered together. And finally, the information is that there is an increase in the number of uh, uh, blind patients because of diabetes, which is incredible. So again, not only diabetes is increasing, but the diabetic complications in the eye is increasing a lot, and the number of blind people because of diabetes is increasing day by day. So we need to do something. And these are the numbers. I don't wanna bother you with numbers, but the concept is that we need to move forward. We need to change the attitude. We need to change the way of thinking about diabetes and about diabetic complications. Why this is crazy? It is crazy because if you look at what we can do today, we can do a lot, but we are not doing. What I want to say is that there is this study which was done by a very good friend of mine, uh, uh, Michael Larsen in Copenhagen. And uh, Michael was considering the number of patients that are experiencing an important visual loss from 2000 to 2010. And what uh, he was able to show is that using well the drugs that we have today, I am speaking about intravitreal injections, the number of patients becoming blind because of age-related macular degeneration. This is not diabetes, but it's another disease that, that can be treated with the same drugs. As you can see, we have a significant reduction of the number of patients blind because of AMD. So we are presenting two different data. First, I was saying the number of patients with diabetes is increasing. Uh, the number of patients blind because of diabetes is increasing. 
but on the same day, we have evidence that if we do well our job, we can reduce the number of patients that are blind. So why this is happening? And these are other countries where the same evidence is present. In Denmark, I told you already 50% less. In Scotland, 59% less. In Israel, 51. In USA, 46%. So the, 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 the drugs we have today can be used very well. And as a consequence of that, the number of patients blind because of AMD can be reduced significantly. So what can we do in order to obtain an improvement of the situation? First of all, screening. Screening and screening. Uh, I was talking to Nati uh, before, and he was explaining me what is he doing now in Mumbai area in order to make screening of diabetic patients for uh, 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 recognizing diabetic complications inside the eye. This is the way to, to go ahead. And um, why it's important screening? Because unfortunately, when you develop diabetic retinopathy, you do not, not have symptoms. You start to have symptoms. You start to see in a bad way with metamorphopsia or reduction of visual acuity only after a long time, when complications are already important. So if you do early diagnosis, it was already shown uh, you can have 98% reduction of visual acuity loss in diabetic retinopathy patients. So screening, first concept. What, uh, what does it mean, screening? M screening is not diagnosis. We do not need to make a lot of efforts when we make our screening programs. We need only to recognize patients that must be addressed to a second level uh, of, uh, of practice or third level of practice. And screening is effective when you have these conditions. You have a population at risk, and diabetic patients are the population at risk. So you have uh, uh, the number of patients to be screened is very well defined. Diabetic patients is evident. Then you have very simply device, like ophthalmoscopy, fundus photography, iPhone, uh, uh, detection of diabetic retinopathy. Whatever you, can, you, can, you want to use, it's fine. The, the main uh, purpose is to recognize if there is something inside the eye and which level of uh, importance is this complication. Then uh, today we have telemedicine, which is very useful to address the images to an expert center. All these things are at very low cost. Uh, you can stage the disease. This is important. When you have a disease like diabetic retinopathy, which is uh, possible to be well defined in different stages, this is very important for uh, screening. Because if you classify your patient as no retinopathy, you do not need to have that patient again in one year. You can wait two, three years before seeing him again or her again. But if you have non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, you can uh, wait six months only. If you have uh, diabetic macular edema, clinically significant edema, you must address your patient for treatment and so on. For proliferative diabetic retinopathy or other kind of complications, the patients must be, must be addressed. So you can stage your patient and you can decide what to do with, with this patient. And then, Last but not least, today we have very effective treatment. We have uh, laser treatment, which is historically the most important treatment for diabetic retinopathy. But today, as I was telling you before, we have injections. We can inject uh, steroids inside the eye. We can inject anti-VGF. The results are very good, and the results are really uh, very, very important. And like, the consequence of all these uh, things are that screening for diabetic complications in the eye are the most uh, quality adjusted life year uh, technique in medicine. You know, quality adjusted life year is a parameter which was uh, defined some years ago, which is uh, a, a bit complicated, but the concept, concept is very simple. The concept is how much I should invest to obtain these kind of results. 
So the relationship between the investment that you must do and the results that you can, that you can get is the quality adjusted life year. That's the concept. So there is no other practice in medicine which has a better quality adjusted life year than screening of diabetic retinopathy. This is incredible. But we are not saying that. We as eye doctors are not explaining that well to our administrators, to our politicians. Otherwise, everywhere we should have screening programs for diabetic complications inside the eye. Is that clear? Any question? You don't care about that? <laughs> no. Politicians. <laughs> the, the problem is that they understand very well. I, had, I can uh, uh, say you something about that. Uh, there was the president of the Diabetica Associations in Italy, who was a very active man. Uh, he was a very good friend of mine. He was a patient, for sure. And he was able to make uh, uh, talk talk to the door of ministries, wherever. And uh, he enters, and he, he was a very powerful man. And I was with him many times, talking to important persons to decide what to do for diabetic retinopathy. And when you talk to politicians, and you start to say, I'm speaking about this, what I said to you now, they are very sensitive. So they are, OK, this is very important. Because they, the, the second question that they address is, so how many diabetic patients we have in Italy? You say 3 to 5%. OK. So they, they start to think that this is a huge number. And then you, you, add, you add, but you must consider also the, the family members of this. OK, so they are much more interested. So at this level, you have a great interest from them. But the dramatic moment, and when they start to say, OK, but if I invest in this program, when I will have the results? That's the problem. And the, the, the answer is in 10 years, 10, 15 years. Because before having results from a screening program, you need to wait a lot. At that point, they say, OK, thank you very much, sir. Because they are not interested to wait so long. The politicians need an answer in one year, in two years, maximum. Otherwise, their polit political life is ended or ever. At least in Italy. I don't know here. But in Italy, it's, that's the way. So. Uh, they would like to have something to do which is able to guarantee more votes immediately. Uh, if you say the results are in 10 years, they are not interested anymore. That's the problem. So they are sensitive to all these things that we said till now, but they are not uh, able to go ahead because they don't see any revenue for them in a short time. The best moment in Italy was when the, uh, the president was, uh, I don't know, Craxi, maybe you don't remember, Bettino Craxi, was a very important politician many years ago. At that time, uh, we had the best law for diabetic patients. He was very motivated. He worked a lot for diabetic patients. And they opened uh, hundreds of uh, uh, center for treatment of diabetic patients all around the country. And we had really an improvement in the quality of uh, diabetes treatment. Uh, but now there is less, less, less interest. And the reason is that they don't see any revenue for them. That's my feeling. So uh, I was saying uh, that uh, screening of diabetic complications is the best quality adjusted life here, that uh, treatment that we can do. Here you have the numbers. Screening and treatment of diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, at least in Italy. I don't know here, but the price is more or less the same, I think. We have 2,900. Uh, orthocoronaric bypass is 4,900. And uh, screening for hypothyroidism is 7,000. So the things that we consider normal are uh, less uh, able to produce a good revenue for the system. The best quality adjusted life here is for screening of diabetic retinopathy. And here you have some, some number. This is for Italy. I, I, I am not able to, 
translate these numbers and this uh, amount of money for, for India, uh, but these are the numbers. Uh, we spent for patients that are uh, blind, visually impaired, 4.4 billion of euros per year, um, 2.8 billion of euros for sanity costs, 1 billion for assistance, social aid, 0.6 billion among taxes, education, cultural aid, 2.1 billion of euros for the loss of productivity at work from these patients. So the costs are not only the patient, but all the, the environment around each single patient. So these are costs uh, that were calculated in Torino by a friend of mine, a diabetologist, 25 euros only per patient, and these are the numbers. The, the main advantage is that today you can do screening with very simple devices. Very simple device. I have uh, there in my telephone a system that you can use for doing your photo, your picture of the uh, fundus of uh, any patient. And this can be uh, directly uh, sent to a reading center for evaluation. So the things are becoming really easy now. It's not a complicated story. We do not need the huge instrument, uh, expensive uh, uh, instruments and so on. But we have also uh, new diagnostic tools, uh, new things that can be used for patients that have already diabetic retinopathy. This is uh, uh, which is with what is called ultra-wide field angiography, which is uh, uh, a camera which is able to make a photo of all the fundus. 200 degree of the uh, retina can be uh, imaged in one shot, which is uh, something incredible compared with what we did before. We started with 30 degree and then 45, 60 degree. Today we have 200 degree in one shot only. And using this, we can improve a lot our capability to see all different lesions that you can have around the retina. This is what uh, was done before when we were using only the seven standard fundus photographies on the basis of the DRS and ETDRS uh, protocols. And today we have something more. We have the OCTA, OCT angiography, which is able to show not only uh, capillary dropout, but also the two different layers of capillaries at the level of the retina and also the choroid. And you can evaluate separately different uh, capillary layers with a lot of information that can be also quantitated. And what can we do? We can do laser treatment uh, as we did before. And this is some uh, kind of uh, uh, automated system for laser treatment. Uh, and Pascal, Navila system, but we can do also laser treatment with different modalities, such as the subtraction laser, which means a very low intensity, low energy treatments with good results and less side effects. But we have also drugs to be used inside the eye. These are the results that were so important for one of the most important uh, registration trial, the RESTORE trial, where we were able to show that treating uh, a, a subgroup of patients with uh, uh, a, 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 an important increase in the retinal thickness, there was this huge difference between laser and the drug treatment with uh, seven, eight uh, letters gained by the patient. So two lines of visual acuity gained. And uh, uh, we must say that this uh, significant improvement in visual acuity is obtained with very good uh, 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 revenues from a financial point of view, mainly in patients with diabetic macular edema compared with those without diabetic macular edema. So I do not want to bother you. There is also the possibility to use uh, steroids, but these are uh, problems for eye doctors, not for uh, an attendance like this. And I'd like to remember you that we said some word about epidemiology. Remember, diabetes is exploding. Diabetic retinopathy is exploding. We must do something to stop this tendency, this trend. If we will not do it, we will be destroyed by the disease. We can do a lot today. It's enough to implement some screening program from, for diabetic complications. We can use a lot of new diagnostic devices, very simple one, cost-effective, uh, and finally, 
we can uh, use whenever needed new modalities of treatment for our patients. I thank you very much for your attention. This is one of the problems. I, I think that the only solution for these kind of problems is education. We must inform patients at any level, by TV, by newspapers. Uh, we, as doctors, should uh, make an effort from this point of view. And I think that the only way is to educate patients, to inform them that it's important to make these kind of controls because this is the best way to avoid blindness or visual loss. Uh, maybe uh, this generation cannot be saved because they, it's late to inform them and to have them educated, but maybe the next generation will be more sensitive to this kind of information. So I think that education is the key answer for these kind of problems. Did you mean to say that uh, use of steroids is a little complicated? No. No, no, no. I, I was trying to, to be short at the end. I didn't want to, to bother you with information uh, that are for, for doctors, for people already uh, informed about our problems. So um, we have today two different uh, families of drugs that we can use uh, by injecting them inside the eye. Uh, the great advantage of this treatment is that you can have a great amount of drug at the level of the target tissue. And this cannot be reached using pills or any kind of systemic therapy. And the two families of drugs are anti-BGF, uh, that are drugs able to stop the effect of uh, one uh, substance which is produced inside the eye, which is called vascular endothelial growth factor. And this vascular endothelial growth factor um, produces two different uh, consequences. One is the blood retinal barrier breakdown, which means that more liquid uh, goes out from the vessels inside the tissue and causes edema. And the other effect is that this vascular endothelial growth factor induces the proliferation of new vessels. So using this anti-BGF drug, you can stop both these characteristics uh, that are typical of the diabetic retinopathy status. And this is one family. The other family is the steroids. Uh, steroids are, uh, again, very effective to stop edema because they improve a lot the efficiency of the barrier of the, the, the vessel wall. So do not uh, allow liquid water to go out from the vessels and to produce edema of the tissue. And uh, steroids have also some effect on, on new vessels, but less than anti-VGF. So uh, the great advantage of using steroids inside the eye is that you do not have any side effects at systemic level. Unfortunately, steroids at systemic level for diabetic patients can cause uh, bad uh, side effects, such as an increase in glycemia. But this is not the case if you use the drug inside the eye. You have a great amount of steroids, very effective, without side effects at systemic level. So uh, I was trying to say that both families of drugs are useful. Uh, I was not saying that steroids are bad. Thank you. <coughs> Doctor, uh, a lot of research is going on all over the world. But I find that the research is more towards uh, curation, towards cure, rather than Prevent. towards prevention. Why can't we sort of 
have more research to prevent the disease rather than cure. Yeah, uh, you're right. Um, prevention of diabetes is something that is out from my field of competence. I mean, I cannot say a lot about that. Um, what we are trying to do is to, uh, to treat diabetic complications as soon as possible when the cascade of um, pathogenic events is not at the end of the story. Because when you are at the end of the story, you can only try to uh, slow down the progression, but you're not able to stop or to go back. Going back, it's impossible. So um, for sure, you are completely right. If we could be able uh, to, to prevent diabetic uh, disease, this is the best way to go ahead. But I think this is uh, uh, a topic very difficult to be realized uh, because uh, diabetes is a, a combination of many things. It's a genetic uh, predisposition associated with many other factors. Uh, one of the most important, uh, which is the reason for the explosion of diabetes in Africa, for example, is that in Africa you have people that have a, a genetic which is not ready to uh, face food like McDonald's. No? Now you have in Angola, wherever in Africa, you have McDonald's, wherever. And people are, are starting to use uh, burger and uh, this kind of food, uh, Coke and so on, but they are not ready for that. They did not eat that kind of food for many generations. So they were uh, used to eat legumes, vegetables, and uh, fishes. So when you arrive with this kind of food in a country like uh, Angola, uh, you have, uh, as a consequence of that, that people very soon uh, develop diabetes because they are not ready for uh, facing this kind of uh, uh, alimentation. So um, the problems for diabetes are are to be considered are a lot, and uh, I think it's really a problem with diabetes. It's not only because nobody would like to do it. I think it's only a problem. With the advancement of genomics, could Yes, develop. this could be, yes, for sure. Yes. Uh, my second question is, uh, laser, in fact, Dr. Natarajan's clinic is also doing that. Uh, uh, by correcting your number, you don't have to wear specs. I also respect whether at what stage or what would you suggest regarding laser surgery to correct the number so you don't have to wear specs? So, uh, you know, at the moment we have evidence that you can have better results compared with laser uh, using anti VGF for diabetic macular edema as well as for proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So the two most important complications of uh, diabetes in the retina can be treated by anti-DGF with better results compared with laser. Uh, I don't think that laser can be forgotten because when, when the US colleagues that produce this data, the Diabetic Retinopathy Clinical Research Network produced a study where they were able to show that anti-VGF were better than, than laser. Or at least visual acuity after two years was similar, but visual acuity during the two years was much better in patients treated with anti-VGF compared with laser. Um, you cannot, f I think you cannot forget laser because uh, the limit of these anti-VGF treatments today is that they stay inside the eye for one month, for two months or something like that. And there is this uh, crazy discrepancy between the duration of the drug inside the eye and the duration of uh, the disease or of the complication. One is for all life long, and the other is for one month, two months. You cannot uh, fight against a complication which is staying for one life uh, using a drug which is staying inside the eye for one month. No, it seems uh, uh, evident. Um, so 
I think that at the moment the best way to approach at least proliferative diabetic retinopathy is to combine laser treatment with anti-BGF or steroids because in this way you have all the advantages of the drug therapies associated with uh, a stable therapeutic effect obtained by laser. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> it's another one. It's another, yeah, we'll exchange. Okay. So I wanted to say that as soon as he arrived, he gave me a gift. So. No, as soon as, as soon as he arrived, he gave me a gift and I was wondering what to do because I didn't take a bouquet also that time into the airport, but I gave it in the hospital. So this is my turn Thank to you. give you. Thank you. So one question which they were asking about prevention, yeah. one of my, this is my dream, which uh, I'm happy Mr. Bajaj is here and Mr. Shivanandan is here. And also I have a friend, Nitin Kanapurkar in London. Like we want to identify the biomarkers where 25% of them develop retinopathy. We, as you rightly said, we don't know how to prevent diabetes because the people are changing and the education yeah. is changed and everybody wants McDonald's and then Subway and everybody. We have a patient who's come from, uh, he was blind in both eyes, but I've operated and he can see well now. We're going to inaugurate a free clinic on Sundays. But uh, one thing I want to do is to, I know it's, a, it's, a, it's going to cost billions of dollars to do the yep. research where I want to identify the biomarkers which are protecting the people yeah. from there. My father had diabetes yeah. for yeah. 45 years. He didn't have retinopathy. My mother had, but uh, he didn't have. And I think there are so many people like that with 50 years of diabetes, they don't have retinopathy. And mm -hmm. somebody has five years and have severe retinopathy. So this is what I'm planning to do as an yeah. NEI project where I told Paul saving. But I think we need numbers and I think cost of evaluating biomarkers is going to be enormous. So at present we have started the biobanking. As you rightly said, neither, either the donor or the politician wants to know the result yeah. in one year yeah. and two years and I don't think nobody has an answer. And I think as you rightly said, our Prime Minister has diabetes but he is controlling it with the, uh, his Ayurvedic as well as exercise and probably medication. But he is not, uh, nobody is able to go tell him about retinopathy. So I am so still we, struggling. Are you hoping to have uh, yes. him uh, with retinopathy? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I think the entire idea of the program is to prevent uh, blindness and I think the okay. uh, entire idea is to reach, tell him that if I can do in uh, slums of Mumbai, why can't whole India do it? That's all is my, I want to convey to the Prime Minister. Thanks, Dr. Bandelu, for that wonderful talk. Uh, I now call Mr. Madhur Bajaj on the dais. He will be releasing the Diabetic Retinopathy book. I request Dr. Natarajan to join him on dais. This is for release of the Diabetic Retinopathy book. Can I have Dr. Chinmay Nakwa, our director of Retina, to also join them, please?
יוזף. Thank you, everyone. I now uh, take this opportunity to announce the launch of the free Sunday diabetic retinopathy screening at our four centers. This is an occasion of celebrating 100 years of Dr. Natarajan's grandmother. And for that, I invite Mr. Anant Raman. He's our chairman of the Aditya Jyot uh, Twinkling Foundation. And Mr. Parde. He's our patient. He's the manager of Subway at Thane. And uh, Mr. Jitu Arman. And, and Mr. Jitu Verma is have, an actor. He's uh, a Bollywood our, and Hollywood actor. And plus, uh, C plus and all. <laughs> so slow here, what's that? Huh? Why do you need a board? Okay. Okay. And uh, Mr. Sunil, uh, Mr. Sunil, Mr. Sunil Parde was uh, blind with diabetes. Thank God, after the surgery, yes, he's recovered vision. So I wanted him, our uh, friend, uh, Mr. Yes, Jojo, Jitu Verma, and uh, all the children call him Jojo because he has acted in uh, Hollywood and Bollywood movie. And thanks to him for uh, all the support. And he's uh, there mainly to support because we are, through this program, one, we want to prevent also eye injuries for the public because he had an injury when we were going in the highway between uh, uh, which place? Mount Abu and Udaipur. Mount Abu and Udaipur. And there are people who want to stone and actually steal things. Unfortunately, the stone hit his eye when the car was going in a hundred uh, mile per hour speed. So we, are, we will be happy to you to inaugurate the clinic along with our patient. And uh, so this is on my grandmother's thing. Thank you, sir. Uh, I now call upon Dr. Chinmay Nakwa, the Director of the Retina Services. He's going to field the question and answer session uh, from the audience. Done with it? So we call uh, Divya Hire. She'll be concluding this wonderful session with her vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. Honorable speaker, uh, our most valued invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I, Ms. Divya Hire, on behalf of Aditya Jodh group of institutions and the entire team, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all the guests for attending this event. A big thank you to Professor Dr. Francesco Bendelo for his effort towards his lecture on the epidemic of diabetic retinopathy. This is an apt time to discuss this topic when our country is home to the largest number of diabetic people and called the diabetes capital of the world. I would like to thank Mr. Bajaj, Mr. Shivanandan, Mr. Arora, Mr. Jitu Verma, Mr. Anantraman sir, Mr. Junjunwala for their valuable presence. I must mention our deep sense of gratitude to Professor Dr. S. Natarajan, sir, who gave all of us this opportunity to learn from 
extraordinary speaker, Professor Dr. Francisco Bendelo. I must thank Dr. Rajan for her effort in making this program a success. I am also very grateful to Dr. Kavita Rao, Dr. Hemlata Vidyashankar, and Dr. Chinmay Nakwa for the excellent coordination for this event. I would like to thank Sipla for their support. I thank you all for joining in and making this e event a grand success. Thank you. La noche, la noche, la noche, la noche.